So this looks like a Kenyan sand boa, and um, I know a lot of reptile owners like to do their own necropsies or um, you know, take a look at uh, animals when they die. And this is something that I always encourage because even if you can't get a professional necropsy from a veterinarian, um, I always encourage people to open up their animals um, after they die to, to just to get a look at uh, you know what happened to them, uh, get some familiarity with uh, the health condition. I mean, it's you can never have too much information about the health of your animals. And what I usually do, what I usually do is um, you you want to start always by observing the outside of the animal. Um, are, what do, what do the eyes look like? Are they sunken? Um, is there any substrate in the mouth? This guy doesn't have any, but his mouth is a little bit mucusy. Eh, little bit. There, it's focusing. Oh. A lot there of times um, when animals die, they'll have uh, like agonal motions where they'll start rolling around. And um, you, sometimes you see uh, snakes or lizards with mouths full of uh, substrate and wood chips from things from that type of thing. And you'll notice um, that there's a large swelling right here. Um, looks like the scent glands, but we'll see. It may, may or may not have to do with the death. Um, and, and you can see that little bit of greening on the bottom here, uh, and also around the cloaca. With, when snakes die within, I would say the first uh, three to five hours or so, you'll start to see the greening around the gallbladder because the gallbladder uh, contains bile, which breaks, which emulsifies fat, and the fat will it, it basically the cell membranes are made of fat, so then it the bile starts to sort of degrade the lining of the gallbladder, and then it um it starts to sort of the gallbladder lining gets real thin, and then it starts to like leak bile into the surrounding area. So this is a death thing, but the greening in this area is a decomp thing. This is not, uh, the sort of light green tinge is not bile. Uh, it's, it, it, this is, this is related to decomp and you'll notice that like, seems pretty dry. There's a lot of, um, sort of folds in the thing. So I would say that it's been dead for like a day maybe, but not more. Um, so less than 24 hours, uh, not frozen or refrigerated. Um, would you say that, like, still good for, like, histology or tissue culture? Typically, a snake has to be uh, submitted within 24 hours for a necropsy. Um, if you freeze it or if it's older than 24 hours, your quality really um, lessens and you may or may not get the adequate histopathology reports. Mm. Um, so, you know, I have submitted some that were older than 24 hours because maybe they died on, you know, Friday or Saturday and then the lab wasn't open until Monday for histopathology, um, but never frozen. Freezing can certainly um, mess with histopathology. Mm. I see. Okay, yeah. So I guess from a breeder's perspective, when you're cutting uh, into for necropsies, you want to use small sharp scissors. These are dissection scissors, but um, I also like cuticle and nail scissors. Uh, they work very well, and you can get them with, at like Walmart for like a couple of dollars. But anyway, uh, start at the the vent, uh, cut, make a small cut, and then what's what the really important thing is to like uh, poke your scissors in, not down, like horizontally and then lift. Uh, that way, um, when you poke it in and then you lift, it um, pulls the skin away from the organs so you're not making a large cut along the organs. A lot of times when I um, see people do like their home necropsies, they'll use like, like a box cutter or something and then they'll no. like, I know, right? It cuts like right through the heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then they'll leave this gigantic cut on the, the uh, all the organs and then yeah everything's no. so bloody and gross yeah gotta keep it clean yeah and then just there's there's on the belly scale you just want to at all times just make sure that you're like in the middle of the belly scale um don't uh deviate or you know anything like that so mm -hmm. so um i'm using my other hand to hold the snake to pull the snake down so that way uh you know you can lift the snake up we do the same thing when when cutting into any animal's abdomen for surgery you always lift up 
on the belly when making your incision because you don't want to stab any of the organs oh, underneath. Okay. Yeah, I was um, actually just kind of like met this the other day where I actually like have never worked on live animals, so I don't know what normal is. <laughs> And so, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's just, just like, I have no idea what a normal, healthy animal looks like on the inside. So right off the bat, it looks like there's some bleeding, um, and this is uh, um, not common. Um, it, and because I like put the scissors in and then I lift it up to lift the to lift the skin away from the organ, I can be sure that this is not from me accidentally cutting the organs. So this pooling of blood is um, not uh, what it, it's not something very normal. Um, so and it's just above the liver. So, um, so actually, after making the central cut, what you want to do is you just want to very carefully separate the skin away from the body, uh, uh, away from the center line. Oh, look, mm. he's got fat in the above the heart wow. and uh, all the way up to the throat. That's a lot of fat. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that much fat in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So with snakes, or I guess in my experience, um, in snakes, you have. Um, uh, babies um, in as a normal condition will have fat above the heart mm -hmm. but um, but in adults that's a sign of um, in pretty intense more obesity so it means that it basically means that they've run out of space um, down in the th last third of the body mm -hmm. the stomach there's the gallbladder that is the green part and then you're starting to see the fat deposits yeah. right here So with the expose, this this one will be interesting. Well, kind of interesting because the uh, the scent glands are so enlarged. So I want to make a little cut uh, in the skin. Um, it's very easy to puncture the scent glands. So um, just want to make sure, make it. Uh, with all these burrowing snakes, mm -hmm. the the skin is attached directly to. A lot of the vertebrae and the bone oh. in the back. So yeah, what they do is like they'll go into um, burrows and then they'll like uh, use the tail to block off the burrow. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's like really difficult to skin the tails because oh, the yeah. skins are so closely attached. That's why I've had trouble in the past. Yeah. So um, snakes have scent glands. I have no idea what they're for. Um, but, uh, and I also see a dimorphic difference in the scent glands where like some of the, for some reason, um, it seems like females will have larger scent glands. I don't know why, but maybe it's because males have the hemipenes. I, I don't want to speculate. Maybe it has something to do with reproduction and attracting the males because the oh, males don't have to be attracted. The females have to attract the males. So maybe it's something hmm. like that. I don't know. That's just a hypothesis. Yeah. So, um... I guess like for the, this this one is a little bit more challenging than um, normal what it would normally be because uh, because as a burrowing snake the tail is very heavily attached the skin is very tightly attached to the to the um, the uh, to to the bone. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. So it's not a hemipene. I can't really see. Mm, I don't think so this is very thin um okay. and i don't like hemipenes are typically on top of scent glands okay. um but i don't i think it's a scent gland actually like why don't we just look for ovaries and testis oh yeah yeah that's faster way to do it yeah 
Wait, where are the testes in these guys? Oh, actually, um, like usually a little bit more cranial than the kidneys. Actually, for for snakes, for snake necropsies, what you can do is like you can pull the the uh, the skin away from the body, and then you can kind of roll the edge. Oh, nice. Yeah, I didn't know that trick. Yeah, you need pulled away, and then you can like have have a nice like okay. you know like here are all the organs kind of thing. So wow, yeah. I never learned that on my pathology yeah. rotation. Yeah. That makes it look so nice. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I don't, I don't... I don't know if you know this. You probably do. But since snake mm. skins tend to roll inwards after you cut it, um, we have to do a special type of suturing whenever we suture a um, cut or a, like a laceration or a wound together. Oh, yeah? Because in order for it to heal, you need the skin to oppose it, you know, on each side. Um, but if the edges aren't opposing, then it won't heal. So in order to counteract the skin from rolling in you have to do it what we call an everting uh, oh you like push it out yeah oh, something like that you have heard about that but i'm never not it's an everting suture pattern to kind of get the skin folds to fold outward instead of inward um yeah this is a female Oh, okay. So these these egg like things are scent glands. Ooh. Um, let me actually let me expose it more. I'm yeah. sorry. No, it's okay. Um, but I've huh. seen videos of you know reptile owners trying to do surgery on their own snakes, and they do the complete wrong stitch because oh, they no. just don't know, you know, normal anatomy rules, I guess. So these are the scent glands. They're not enlarged. Mm. Um. Oh look, they're like beans. Wow. It's really like, I, I guess it's like easy to mistake them for the testicles because people don't expect the testicles to be inside the body. Wow. I'm In this video, we will label the organs of a snake. Okay. We've got a uh, snake um, necropsied over here. She was donated from a breeder and um, she is a young female Kenyan sand boa. Uh, we opened her up and um, there's some issues here and there, but um, not nothing that jumps out to us as super distinct. So then, um, uh, in in a case like this, something uh, we would have to send tissues to the lab because um, uh, nothing there, there's nothing no big tumors, you know, nothing huge. So maybe a pathology or um, a histopathology thing to determine what she really died of. But um, she is uh, fairly nice looking inside. Um, and uh, you know, this is a great chance to take a look at uh, snake anatomy in general. These guys have a lot of uh, uh, organs that are structures that are similar to us. Um, here you see her trachea. Trachea. Trachea, it's okay. So here we see the trachea and on the other side is the esophagus. It's right here. Perfect. This, uh, this girl actually has fat above the heart, which is a sign that she is very, very obese for a snake. Um, in snakes, uh, typically only babies will have their, some of their baby fat above the heart. Um, in adults, they, the, this, the fat typically accumulates at the last third of the body. And if they have it above the heart and even going into the throat area, it means that they're extremely obese. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, it looks like she hasn't been eating for a while. We can, we can tell that, uh, her fat down here is, there's not so much of it. So mm -hmm. that means that even though uh, she has fat above the heart, which indicates her as obese, she's also not terribly so because she's rapidly lost a lot of weight very recently. This is something like a, uh, you know, 300 pound person who's within a couple of weeks gone down to like 190 or something mm -hmm. where they still have those fat deposits, but they're not fat per se. Mm -hmm. And her GI tract is pretty empty. Right. So, um, okay. so moving on, the heart is extraordinarily tiny. This is the size of a heart that I would expect in a snake third of the size. You, uh, for a snake her size, I would expect the heart to be at least the size of a dime, um, mm -hmm. something like this. But, uh, it seems here that she's, it's really small. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's, this is like, isn't that thing yeah. from like, uh, 
the Grinch stole Christmas and it just like just progressively gets smaller or yes. larger. Like yes. very small. The heart shrunk three sizes. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, it's it, the heart in this girl is very, very small and we don't know why. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, we have the liver. We have the liver right here. Uh, between the heart and the liver, but going down past the liver right here mm -hmm. is the lungs. Uh, snake snakes have septate lungs. Um, they're somewhat somewhat hard to see right here. Mm -hmm. This is the lung. Pink tissue. Yeah. Kind of looks like a sponge. Um. The liver right here uh, is a bit interesting. Um, there is a sort of a mottled spot right here that is um, not very normal, not normal. And uh, going down, there's a lot of modeling down here that is also very abnormal. So there's something going on with the liver. We don't know what that is. But past the liver, you have more lung, um, but it's a bit hard to see. And then we have the stomach. Um, and it is empty. It is. It is. Uh, but it's pretty big, so you can see how they can fit in like a nice rat or mouse there. Yeah. Okay. Um, very stretchy organ. Very stretchy organ. We have the gallbladder. Um, Mm. We have the gallbladder, it's right here, and it's green. And you'll see that the bios has actually stained the flesh around the gallbladder itself. This is actually a pathological effect. So this is just an effect of death. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with um, disease or why she died or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. just a... I don't want to say decomp, it's not really, it's just a pathological thing. They mm -hmm. just look like that when they die. Just pop <laughs> small, uh, So the small intestine is right here. Mm. To get a better... So here's the small intestine. Loop, loop back and forth. Loop back and forth? Yeah, there, you, yeah, you can see the loop. Oh, yes. So, yeah, there, that's a good view. Mm -hmm. Cool. After the small intestine, you get into the large intestine, just the straight part. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did we know it was a female? Uh, yes, because actually, um, along the large intestine, we see the oviduct and the ovaries. Um, in most in most snakes, uh, in, in many snakes that, that'll breeding, you'll see a lot of eggs or uh, sort of follicles. follicles yeah, um, she was not sexually active at this point, um, so where, where? they were really tiny. It was really hard oh, to see, yes. but they were right up by the gallbladder. Yes, there we go. There we go. Right here, she has a couple of follicles, like one right there, one right there, mm -hmm. but look, she definitely wasn't breeding. Mm -mm. Yeah. What about so, the other side? Uh, there we go. Ah, yes. There we go. And the right side is always a little bit in front of the left, I believe. Yeah. It's just like the kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. The kidneys were the right side is in front yeah. of the left. Oh, here we go. There we go. Yeah. It's yeah. A good, that's a good picture. I have a really good picture of um the, when you were spreading it. Cool. There we go. So those are the ovaries. Mm-hmm. So uh, here we have the kidneys. We have one here, another one here. Mm, the right and the left. The right, right and the in left. front. Um, in snakes, the kidneys look like a stack of coins that like fell over. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and then just some more fatty deposits that These we saw are earlier. Fat deposits. We can. Uh, Posits. The cloaca here, which has a lot of ureates in it, mm -hmm. um, this is the cloaca. You can't really see it well because we took the, the skin off, but that's where the vent would be. Yes. Let's see what's got to me 
And then after that, you have the scent glands, which mm -hmm. I've never seen before because I usually don't dissect that part, mm. but they're really cool. Scent gland. And in females, they might be a little bit bigger. Yeah, males have hemipenes over them, mm. so there's I think there's less space. So basically, like the male head, the the female ones are longer. And then mm. the males would like go down here, maybe. You'll cool. see in the, the hog nose. Okay, well, that's all that we have on this one. That's pretty cool. All right, so we are going to express some scent glands. And you can see that this is the duct of the, the red, the red lines are the duct of the scent gland. So if oh. we squish it, you'll see it oh. beating out. Oh. Gross. Yeah. Like creme brulee. Oh, <laughs> I can never eat creme brulee again. Oh, that smells. Okay. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> <laughs>